Right, hey guys, so uh, one more tip I'd love to share with you is uh, what happens to the hip and the chest when during a, a quadruped walk cycle. Um, there is obviously an offset between the, the chest and the hips, right? So we have, uh, let's say we have a contact pose on the front foot. Okay, so we have this pose. And then we're having a passing position on the back leg. There's a little bit of a delay because of the offset. And of course, when this, when this, if this is a human walking, let's say that's a human walking, the hip is at the highest point here. Whereas we're at a contact position, a big stretched position, which is actually lowering the chest at that time. So we have the hips going up and the chest going down opposite of each other. And that is reflected as well in the curve. So if we select the uh, chest controller, there's this one, and then the hip controller is, let me just select that one. It's the next, this one, I think. Let me just check, yeah. Okay, so we have the hips coming up because we're in a, in a passing position. So the hips are coming up on the translation of Y curve. And then it, they also are going down while the other one is at its highest point, more or less. Okay, so this is the this is the graph, and we've got the highest point up here, and we've got a lowest point on the other side um, on the translation of Y. This is also true to the X rotations, right? So the, the translation left and right of the feet. So uh, so when the chest is is uh, when the dog is in this passing position, the chest is um, translated to the right here just show you on the translation of X curve we also have this offset going on and a lot of animators tend to um, not pay attention to that I guess and I it's it's quite strange to me when I see it why it is not um, paid so much attention to the shifting of the weight left and right and the offset of the chest going up when the hip is going down that's just something to bear in mind and of course the rotations and everything that's all separate separate so um, just pay attention to that part of the walk cycle when you're animating a quadruped and you should be fine uh, more or less I think that um, it's one of those things that animators you know you don't really get taught this uh, all the time especially with quadrupeds it's really tricky so uh, I thought I'd just share that point with you um, and yeah, and the rotations, of course, on the hip. One thing, one thing that is very, very important uh, is to rotate the hip in the x-axis as well. I see a lot of uh, animators and animation walk cycles um, online, and animators forget to rotate in this axis, which is also strange. So when the dog is lifting its uh, back leg off, the spine is extended like that okay because it's trying to sort of um, if we have the back leg coming off the ground here it's rotated in that angle and it's stretched and then these you know quadrupeds backs are quite flexible and then when it's in the passing position to help with the contact position the uh, the hip is more rotated in that direction the hip so the chest actually doesn't rotate as much as the hip so if we look at the rotation of X on both, I've got it in uh, I've got it in um, normal mode. So let me just show you. So we have the hip, I think I believe is this one, yeah. And then we have the chest, and you can see that the values are much bigger on the rotation of X on the hip than they are on the chest. So the chest doesn't rotate as much as one would assume there is some rotation in there but it's important to uh, not over exaggerate this and have some crazy uh, rotations because you end up breaking the spine on the joint here um, and that's something you don't want to do you want to just make it feel as natural as possible so uh, uh, that's the tip on the chest and the hips I hope you like it and I'll see you in the next video thanks